Welcome back, everyone, to English is Easy. I'm your host, Connor. This is the show where I use very simple, clear, and slow English to tell really interesting stories and help you improve your English listening skills. Now, today, we are going to be taking a look at the fascinating legend of Pandora's box. We're going to read the story. We're going to take a look at some of the difficult words or vocabulary in the story. And then I'm going to give you a challenge to use what you've learned. Be sure to click like on this video and subscribe and turn on closed captions if you want to read and listen at the same time. And with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump into today's story, Pandora's Box. In ancient times, when gods ruled the earth and magic filled the air, there was a young girl named Pandora. She lived in a land of beauty and wonder where flowers bloomed in every color imaginable and birds sang melodies that danced upon the breeze. Pandora was a curious soul. She was always eager to explore the mysteries of the world around her. Well, one day, as she roamed the forests near her home, she stumbled upon a strange and special box. It was hidden beneath the branches of a very tall oak tree. Now, this box was unlike any box she had ever seen. It had intricate carvings, and it shimmered with a faint, strange, glowing light. Intrigued or interested by this beauty, Pandora approached the box very cautiously and carefully. As she reached out to touch it, a voice whispered in her mind, warning her of a great danger. A great danger that lay within the box. But Pandora's curiosity could not be quelled. It would not go away. With trembling hands, shaking hands, she lifted the lid of the box, unaware of the chaos she was about to unleash. Suddenly, a great gust of wind exploded from the box, carrying with it a torrent of darkness and evil, sickness, sadness, jealousy, fear. All of these terrible things poured from the box, poured like a river, flooding the world with their terrible energy. Pandora gasped in horror as she watched the world around her crumble beneath the weight of its newfound troubles. Of course, she was desperate to fix her mistake, to undo what she had done. So Pandora, she tried to close the box. However, it was too late. The darkness that had come from inside the box had already taken root. It was spreading its tendrils far and wide. The once vibrant and beautiful landscape was now shrouded in shadow, and the songs of the birds had turned to sad cries. But amidst all of this terrible darkness, 
a single light did remain. At the bottom of Pandora's box lay a tiny flame of hope, flickering, dancing, ever so weakly against the gloom and doom all around. Though the world did indeed seem lost, Pandora held this light close, knowing that as long as hope continued, as long as light endured, there would still be a chance for redemption. And so, Pandora embarked on a journey. This would be a journey to restore the world to its former glory, or the beautiful way it used to be. With each step she took, the flame of hope burned a little brighter, guiding her through the darkness and lighting the way to a brighter tomorrow. In the end, it was Pandora's courage and determination that saved the world from eternal darkness, or darkness that would last forever. Through her actions, she taught humanity, or humankind, an important lesson. That even in the darkest of times, hope can always be found, if only we have the courage to look for it and seek it out. Okay, guys, that's the story. How about a little bit of context? Historical context. Where did this story come from? Well, long ago, the Greeks believed in stories about gods and goddesses who lived on a very high, very magical mountain called Mount Olympus. They thought they believed that these gods controlled everything in life, like nature and love and even time. One of the most famous stories from this place and this time is Pandora's box. It's linked or connected to an old Greek poet named Hesiod. Hesiod a man who wrote poems and stories. This man lived a very long time ago. He wrote about Pandora in one of his poems called Work and Days. The Pandora story explains why there's trouble and sadness and darkness in the world. According to this myth, or very old story, the gods made Pandora as the first woman. They gave her many gifts and a special box. They warned her not to open it, but she couldn't resist her curiosity. When she did open it, out flew all the troubles of the world and spread around everywhere. The Greeks used this story to understand why bad things happen. They thought that Pandora's curiosity brought evil into the world. Over time, people have retold this story, the story of Pandora's box, in many different ways. It teaches us to be careful about being too curious but it also reminds us to hold on to hope, even when times are tough. Okay, now that we understand a little more about where the story came from, I want to take a look at some difficult vocabulary words associated with this story, or that are connected to this story. One of those words, our first word, is malevolent. Malevolent. It means having or showing a wish to do evil to others. 
In other words, if someone is malevolent, they desire, they want to hurt other people. Here's an example. The villain in the story had a malevolent grin that sent shivers down the spines of the heroes. Okay, so if someone has a malevolent grin, it's probably not a good thing, right? It's not a good sign. It's a sign that maybe they want to hurt other people. Okay, another word from the story is tendrils. Tendrils. What does that mean, tendrils? A tendril is a slender, thread-like appendage of a plant that often coil around objects for support. Okay, now that might sound really complicated, but I want you to think about like a vine. It's a very skinny kind of arm of a plant. Here's an example. The vines of the pumpkin plant reached out with their tendrils, grasping on to the nearby fence for stability. Okay, now, in the story, we saw tendrils of darkness escaping from Pandora's box, right? So, when you think about tendrils of darkness, you can think or imagine, like, skinny arms. Very skinny, wispy arms. Our third word that I'd like to take a look at is encroaching. Encroaching. That means advancing gradually beyond what is usual or acceptable limits. So, for example, the construction site was encroaching upon the peaceful park. The construction site was encroaching upon the peaceful park. That means that the construction site is getting closer and closer beyond what is okay, further than what is acceptable. Okay, another word from the story is gloom. Gloom. It means partial or total darkness, a state of melancholy or sadness. Okay, so here's an example. The gloom of the stormy night seemed to seep and creep into the very bones of those who dared to venture outside, right? So if it's a gloomy night, then maybe there's lots of clouds and fog and rain, and the atmosphere all around makes you feel sad. It makes you feel gloomy, gloomy. Okay, our last vocabulary word for today is redemption. Redemption. What is redemption? Redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin, or if you made a mistake, being saved from your mistake, or if you are eaten up by evil, if there is evil within you, inside of you, being saved from that evil, these things we call redemption. Okay, maybe that sounds a little complicated, but here's an example. After years of struggle, the good guy in the story finally found redemption through acts of kindness and selflessness earning the forgiveness of the people he had wronged. Okay, so if you do bad things, if you hurt people, if you make people upset and cause a lot of pain, maybe later on you can find redemption, or you can find uh, being saved from the bad things you've done by doing some good things instead, right? Okay, guys, that's the end of our lesson today. I just want to give you one final challenge before I go. In the comment section of this video, I want to challenge you to respond to this story. While you were listening to it, how did you feel? After listening to it, 
What thoughts and reflections did you have? If you can use one of today's vocabulary words, I'm going to give you bonus points as well. All right, everybody, one more time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that today's lesson was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe or leave a comment. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Bye-bye.